In this video, I'll show you some tricks to make your fonts look their best in Affinity programs. You can start with text like this and make it look like this. Today we'll be looking at this font here called Horror World. It's a paid font, but you can download it for free if you have a Creative Fabrica subscription. I'll leave a link down below. So I'm here in Affinity Designer, which I'll be using for this video. But any of the Affinity programs will work, which includes Photo and Publisher. So let me start by creating some text. I'll use the Artistic Text tool here, so I'll click this. I'll drag, and let's make some text. I'll call this Horror. I'll hold Alt and I'll click and I'll drag to create another word. And I'll type World. Now let me set the font that we just downloaded. I'll type Horror here, and I'll select it. So it looks a little underwhelming right now. Now something I like to do when working with a font is to copy and paste the thumbnail image next to my text as a reference. So here I am on the fonts page. Let me right click on it. I'll select copy image. And now back in Affinity Designer, I'll just paste it. And let's put it next to our text here. So this is a good way to study how the fonts are used. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make a background that's kind of a similar color to our thumbnail here. I'll just create a rectangle, send it to the back. And let's make it some type of dark blue here. I'll just select off of the thumbnail here. Again, we can always change this later. I'll lock it into place. Now let's give our main text here some color. I'll select both words. And let's start with this light purple up here at the top of the words. So I'll use my color picker. I'll select some color in there. And I'll apply it. Now I think the easiest place to start is with the outlines on these letters here. So if we zoom in and observe them, we can see there's three levels. We have this white outline here. Then there's kind of like this dark blue one. And then we have a lighter blue one on the edge. So I think the easiest way to do that is to use the layer effects. So I'll move my words closer together here. I'm just going to turn off snapping for now. And I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to group them with Control G. I could apply the styles to the words individually, but I'm going to apply it at the group level so I only have to change it in one place. So with the group selected, I'll click layer effects. And let's add that initial outline. So I'll check this box here. It's white, so I'll make it white here. And you can see we have the white outline there. Let's add the dark blue outline. So I'll click plus. Now these outlines are stacked on top of each other. So the one on the bottom is going to be behind the top one. For the bottom one, let's make it that dark blue. I'll select the dark blue. Apply it. Now we're not seeing it because it's the same size as the outline above it. However, if I increase the radius, now we can start to see it. Let me make it a little bit darker. I think that's showing up better there. And finally, let's add the light blue outline. So I'll click the plus again on this bottom layer, change the color. Let's make it the light blue. The pixels have several different colors, but we can just choose one in the middle. Apply that. Now let's make the radius bigger. And now we're getting that extra outline there. And by the way, the fact that the outlines are applied to the group, you can notice in here how the outlines are being affected. If I take the word world and I move it around, you can see the outlines aren't overlapping the letters. So maybe that's an effect you want, maybe it isn't. If you did want the words to be individually outlined, you could apply the effects to the words individually. Now we can see this dark purple texture here. Let's try to add that. For this, I'll go to the pixel persona. And that's this button up here, pixel persona. I'll create a new pixel layer to paint this texture on. So I'll click add pixel layer here. And we have a pixel layer there. Let's choose a brush that can create this effect. I'll click brush. Then on my brushes tab here, I'll choose Dry Media, and I like Gritty Crayon here, so I'll select that. Let me go back to my color. Let's choose this color here. Now I can paint sideways, and you can see it's creating this gritty texture effect. Now you can see that this is outside of the words, of course. If I want the texture to be inside the word horror here, I can click and drag the pixel layer and let go over the word horror. And you can see now it's inside. If we expand this here, I can continue painting on it if I like. I can move it around, stretch it. I think there's pretty good. Now to apply it to the word below, I'll just copy this pixel layer with Control J. I'll drag it up to the world, let go, and then I'll pull it down. And we have it there. So that's a quick way to apply some texture. Now keep in mind that these pixel layers do have a resolution, they're not vector layers. So if you export your image as a raster format like a PNG or JPEG, just keep an eye on them and make sure the quality is still there. Let's go back to the designer persona. Now, if you looked at these words carefully, one thing you may have noticed is that some of the letters are different. For example, we have two R's here, but they look different. And I think that's because they're different cases. So let me go back to my word here. I'll select my text tool. And I'll replace this R with a capital R. So let me delete it. I'll hold Shift R. And we can see it actually looks different. We can see the same thing with these O's here. The second O is different. So let me delete that. Let me put a capital O in, Shift O. And there we have a different looking O. 
So for some fonts, you can use upper and lowercase letters creatively to get different looks. Now there's one final touch I wanna to do. Sometimes you notice these little gaps here. Now maybe you're fine with them, but if you do wanna get rid of them, you can just add little patches. So I'm gonna take a circle here. I'll draw over this gap here. I'll just resize it so it's the right size. And then I'll change the color to this blue behind it. So I'll select that. I'll get rid of the stroke. And there we have a little patch. Just remember that if you change the letters, you'll need to change the patches there. And here we have our final result used in a real life example. I changed the colors a little bit and added a slight glow to the words, but it's basically the same process we looked at. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see more videos about typography and fonts. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.